May 15th. On this day we celebrate the memory of our venerable father, Pacomius the Great. Our blessed father, Pacomius, was born of pagan parents in Upper Egypt in about 292. From childhood he felt a lively repulsion for idol worship and showed a natural inclination towards the good. Forced into the army during Maximinus Dyer's campaign against Licinius, he was moved by the charitable attitude of the Christians of Thebes towards the conscripts who were being dragged without consideration to the garrison as prisoners. Freed without delay, he was baptized in the village of Senesset, and on the fa following night saw a dew descend from heaven and spread over his head, then condense in his right hand and become a honey that flowed down over all the ground. He immediately began to live the ascetic life, being guided only by his conscience, serving the local people, especially during an outbreak of plague. After three years, disturbed by the frequent visits of lay folk and animated thenceforth by a violent love for God alone, he became a disciple of a holy elder, a harsh and austere man who lived in solitude outside the village, St. Palamon, whom we commemorate on the 12th of August. After having severely tested him, Palamon clothed him in the monastic habit and taught him to keep vigil as he himself did, half the night and sometimes all night through, reciting passages from scripture, to fast all day till nightfall in summer and only to eat one day in two or three in winter without ever taking oil, wine, or cooked food. Their liturgical office consisted during the night of fifty groups of psalms concluding with a prayer and sixty during the day, without counting the constant recollection of God that they held in their hearts and spirits, according to the Apostles' recommendation. To provide for their needs, and especially for those of the poor, they plaited articles from wire, linen, or pine fiber, even working at night while reciting the Word of God in order to combat, combat sleep. If, in spite of the manual work, sleep overcame them, they got up and carried sand in baskets from one part of the desert to another. One Easter day, Pacomius poured a little oil on the crushed salt that was their staple diet. Palamon struck himself on the face and burst into tears, saying, My Lord is crucified, and I use oil. Pacomius not only endured the elders' rigorous discipline with a good will, but applied himself beyond all else to keeping his heart pure by strict vigilance over his thoughts, employing all the resources of his spirit to learning the word of God by heart, in order to make it his own. He would go off into the desert to pray or stand the whole night among the graves, stretching his hands heavenward as though crucified and sweating so much that the ground beneath his feet became muddy. During his nocturnal prayers, the demons set on him and attacked him openly, but the man of God covered them, covered them with confusion, praising God and mocking their futile artifices. When their attacks became even more vehement, he mortified his body even more and asked God to deprive him of sleep until he had achieved a definitive victory. His prayer was heard and he acquired from then on such favor with God that his body could already delight, in some small measure, in the incorruptibility promised to the elect. He could tread on serpents and scorpions without danger and could cross the Nile among the crocodiles. After four years of striving, the vision of the heavenly dew came again, but he waited a further three years before withdrawing to the solitude of the desert. When he arrived in a place called Tebenisi, on the northeast bank of the Nile, he heard a voice from heaven telling him to stay there and found a monastery. Having obtained Palamon's agreement just before his death, Pacomius settled there and gave himself to strict ascesis in solitude until his eldest brother John came to join him. Having all things in common, they lived in great renunciation and gave the fruit of their labor away to the poor, keeping only what was strictly necessary for life, two loaves and a little salt every day. At the end of their daily vigil they took a short rest sitting without leaning against a wall. During the day they exposed themselves to the intense heat of the sun, keeping the passion of our Savior Jesus Christ and the trials of the martyrs in mind. 
One day an angel of God appeared to Pacomius while he was keeping vigil and said to him three times, Pacomius, it is the will of God that you serve the human race to reconcile them with him. From that time on, men from the nearby villages gathered around him to live the hermit life together. Each of them lived alone as he desired, and each did his part for the material needs of the community. Pacomius put himself humbly at their service, prepared the food that they desired, received the guests, and tended the brethren when they were sick, although he contented himself with bread and salt at all times. These rough men, however, showed him no respect. They despised his humility and even mocked him. The man of God possessed his soul in patience for five years until the day when, after rece having received the command from God during a night of prayer, he imposed a rule of common life on them and drove away with authority those who would not conform. New candidates for monastic life presented themselves. Pacomius, after having strictly tested them, directed them to live according to the scriptures, having all in common, in perfect equality, in imitation of the apostolic community. Placing himself at their service as formerly, he taught them to carry their cross and follow Christ, and to have no care but that of recalling the Lord's words in their spirits. It is said that an angel dressed as a monk showed him the model of their habit and gave him a tablet on which the rule of the community was written. It prescribed that food and drink be given to each according to his constitution and work, without holding back those who wished to practice greater ascesis. They had to live in separate cells grouped in houses according to their affinity or occupation, and came together three times a day to address to God twelve groups of psalms and prayer. When Pacomius objected that this did not add up to many prayers, the angel replied, All that I prescribe is to ensure that even the little ones can observe the rule without discouragement. As for the perfect, they have no need of laws, because in their cells they consecrate their whole lives to the contemplation of God. When the number of brethren reached a hundred, Pacomius built them a church in the monastery and on Sundays asked a priest from the village to come and celebrate the divine liturgy, as he refused to allow any of his monks to be ordained priest from the fear that vainglory and jealousy would come and shatter their harmony. Shortly after St. Athanasius' consecration as Archbishop of Alexandria and visited the monastery of Teb Tabanisi, but Pacomius, having learnt that he wished to ordain him priest, hid until the prelate had left. The community that he called the Quinonia grew apace. St. Pacomius appointed brethren confirmed in virtue to assist him, one as administrator of their material needs with a helper. Others had the charge of looking after the sick, the reception of guests, or the selling outside of the products made by the monastery. Three times a week, St. Pacomius called the community together and himself instructed the brethren, interpreting the scriptures, and on the two fast days, the heads of the houses in their turn gave a catechesis for their respective monks. St. Pacomius' sister, Maria, having also come to join him, the saint had a monastery built in the village where many sisters came together to live a life like that of the monks, guided by an austere and wise elder called Peter. Around Easter 346, an epidemic of plague broke out in the Quinonia and killed more than a hundred of the most eminent brethren. The saint caught it in his turn, but refused any special treatment. Although his body was greatly weakened, his eyes were full of flame. He spent the first days of great week in praying to the Lord that the unity of the Canonia would not be broken after his death. Then calling the brethren together, he took them as witnesses that during his life he would, had never concealed anything and had lived as one of them, behaving to all as a servant and a nurse who tends her children. He added that the rules and traditions that he had instituted for them under the Lord's inspiration were the only way of finding rest of soul and eternal salvation. Around Pentecost, he de designated Petronius, who had himself also caught the illness, to be his successor, and then ordered the brethren to cease their weeping, as the Lord had commanded him to go and join the abode of the fathers. He ordered Theodore with great severity to bury his body in a secret place so that no veneration be given it, and exhorted him to care for his negligent brethren. 
He gave his apostolic soul into God's hands on the 9th of May, 346, at the age of 54. At that moment the area was shaken by an earthquake, a heavenly fragrance was released, and many elders saw hosts of angels escorting the saint's soul to the place of his rest. When St. Anthony the Great heard in his distant desert of St. Pacomius' death, he praised him as a new apostle and gave, and gave great eulogies on the Cenobitic life of which he was the founder. Answering those who had said that he himself had achieved greater glory in the Eremitic life, he replied that it was out of necessity that he had embraced the solitary life, because there was then no Cenobium. And he added, In the kingdom of heaven we shall see one another, we shall see all the fathers, and above all, we shall see our Master and our God, Jesus Christ. Blessed is our God always in all for the birth of the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. O heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, be gracious unto our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We owe thee the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever of the ages of ages. Amen. Thou didst prove our chief pastor of the chief shepherd Christ, Guiding the flocks of monastics unto the heavenly fold, whence the lotest of the habit and the way of life, that doth be fit ascetic ranks, having taught this to thy monks, thou now dancest and rejoicest with them in heavenly dwellings, O great Pacomius, our Father and God. Abide. Overwhelming power once laid low, the whole army of Pharaoh in the deep and the incarnate word has destroyed pernicious sin. All glorious is the Lord, for gloriously has he been glorified. O Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. Trusting in the goodness of thy ways, O man of God, I eagerly strike up a fitting him to thee. Wherefore, by thine entreaties, O most excellent Pacomius, make my mind bright with thy shining illumination. Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for Seize us. Seize with the ardent love of this passion, O Father Pacomius, thou mayest the material causes of the passions to wither away, and given wings by love, O all-blessed one, thou didst attain to the fullness of the illumination that wells forth from the Godhead. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou didst fill the heavenly orders with great joy when thou camest to know the Maker of all creation. For while being held in prison, O God-bearer, thou didst learn of his unspeakable power, being instructed in the doctrine of faith. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Thou art higher than all creation, visible and invisible, O pure ever virgin. For thou gives birth to the Creator, who was well pleased to become incarnate in thy womb. 
boldly intercede with him that all souls be saved. But as if the parent church of the nations blossomed like a lily at that, thine advent, O Lord, and therein has my heart been established, O Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. Thou didst run like a heart to the water, O righteous Pacomius, and being sprinkled with holy baptism, thou didst receive the dew wherewith thy heart was sweetened. Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. Not enduring to behold the earnestness of thine asceticism, O righteous and God-bearing Father, the hordes of the adversaries devise diverse temptations for thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Since thou hast acquired a sacred way of life, thou became a lawgiver and a guide of ascetics, leading them unto Christ, O all lorded Pacomia. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The orders of the angels were astonished, O all pure virgin, and the hearts of men were troubled at thy giving of birth. Therefore with faith, with reverence, thee as the Theotokos. O wise Father, with showers of fervent tears, Thou didst plentifully water thy holy soul, And Thou didst reap many ears of the virtues as ripened wheat. Thou becamest a shepherd of righteous monastic flocks, And didst graze them upon the green herb of ascetic feet. So Thou, when released from earthly life in great glory, was numbered with all the choirs of the fathers, and now we cry unto thee, O Pacomius. Intercede with Christ our God, that forgiveness of all their transgressions be granted to them that with longing keep thy holy memory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Like that two widows' mites I present to thee, songs of praise and thanksgiving as right and due. For all of thy kindnesses, O my lady, for thou in truth art my shelter and help, my protection and swift defense, ever drawing me out of temptations and sore distress. Wherefore, being rescued from all them that afflict me, as though from the very midst of a great furnace all ablaze, I cry to thee with all my heart. O Theotokos, help me and pray that thy Son and God forgive my many sins, for I, thine unworthy servant, have thee as mine only hope. O Neither an angel nor yet an ambassador, but thyself incarnate, O Lord, came as forth from the Virgin, and has saved me the whole man. Wherefore I cry to thee, glory to thy power, O Lord. Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. What an excellent governor thou became for the company of monks, O Pacomius. Thou was instructed in a vision to raise up schools of virtue, O all-wise Father. Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. Having received the splendor of the Holy Spirit, thou became an exceedingly bright star, shining with grace on all, whom thou dost guide with thy teachings unto the haven of salvation. Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. Thy life is become a most exact rule for monks, O all blessed Father, God bearing Pacomius, wherewith they who follow thy divine teachings now order their lives. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Here's to the longing for the Master, O Pacomius, thou didst quell with abstinence the comfort of the flesh, and thou didst consecrate thy whole life as a sweet-smelling sacrifice. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All we, the faithful, know thee to be a haven of salvation, an unshaken wall, O Lady Theotokos, for by thine intercessions thou dost deliver our souls from danger. Thou art a mediator between God and man, O Christ God, for by thee, O Master, are we led up out of the darkness of ignorance to thy Father, the source of light. 
O Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. Love for God, thou becamest conversant with the teachings of the Spirit, and enlightened by them thou didst attain to the pinnacle of virtue by freeing thy soul from passion. Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for we us. We offer thee thine ascetic as a suppliant, O Master, and through him we ask to be illuminated with the light of grace and that we may always be guarded by thy whole armor. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Making thy mind strong by the keeping of the commandments of Acomias, thou mayest the uprights into the flesh to wither by thine abstinence, and was revealed as a shepherd of a God-loving assembly. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Beseech thy Son and Lord, O pure Virgin, that peaceful deliverance be granted to those who hope in thee, who are in captivity because of adverse circumstance. Compassed by the abyss of my many sins, I invoke the boundless abyss and unfathom deep of thy compassion, O my Christ. Raise me out of corruption, O Lord my God. O Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. Thou didst trample upon the devices of the spirits of destruction, O Father, since thou hast clad in the power of thy Master, and fenced about with the precious cross. Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. Thou didst sensibly prefer the eternal to the temporal, O righteous Pacomius, and when thou hast manfully endured the pains of asceticism, Thou became a steward of souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Since thou willingly became poor in spirit, O Father, thou hast received in the heavens immortal joy that has no end and reaches pastorally. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Virgin, thou hast conceived without knowing man, and thou remains a virgin manifesting the tokens of the true divinity of thy Son and God. Throughout the whole world thou shonest as a brilliant star, the wilderness thou didst colonize with multitudes. Having taken on thy shoulders like thy cross thou didst crucify thyself, and with struggles didst waste thy flesh and ceaselessly intercedest for us all. The command of the iniquitous tyrant opposed to God raised up a lofty flame, but Christ, who is blessed and all-glorious, spread a spiritual dew upon the pious youths. O Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. Clothed in the master's strength, thou didst trample upon his of life as it had been dust, casting thyself forward in longing for the life that is free of defilement. And thou dost now partake thereof, O Father, dwelling in the choirs of the angels. Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. Acquiring a heart surpassingly pure, thou wast deemed worthy to behold him that none may see. And thou art blessed according to the promise, O Father, praising the benefactor, the supremely glorious. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Possessing an orthodox mind, O all blessed Pacomius, thou didst proclaim a unity three in number, and a trinity one in essence, and thou towards the dread incarnation of the word while hymning the ever-virgin as the Otoko. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. We perceive thee to be the holy of holies, who alone has conceived the unchangeable God, O virgin undefiled, O unwedded mother. For in thy divine giving of birth, thou hast made incorruption to well up for the faithful. Once in Babylon, the fiery furnace divided its action at the command of God, consuming the Chaldeans, but bedewing the faithful who chant, Bless the Lord, all ye works of the Lord. O holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. By divine command, thou was initiated by the angel into wise patterns for the conduct of ascetics, O wise Father, and nurtured now therein with the nurslings of piety, cry out, 
Holy you are, bless you the Lord. Holy Father, Pacomius, pray to God for us. Oh, all wise Pacomius, the life of asceticism shining like lightning, dawn with the very greatest rays of fiery brightness upon all that piously cry to the Creator. All you works, bless you, the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Knowing the one nature and Godhead of the Trinity, the glorious Pahomius proclaimed and glorified the All-Holy Spirit and the O Christ, who past understanding was begotten of the unbegotten Father before the ages. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. We who hold to true religion call thee the portal of the light, O Virgin Mother of God. For thou, O all pure one, gives birth past nature to the Father's effulgence, united to the grossness of the flesh, whom we all his works praise as the Lord. Our God and Lord, the Son of the Father, which is without beginning, has appeared to us incarnate of a virgin, to enlighten those in darkness and to gather the dispersed. Wherefore we magnify thee, O him, Theotokos. O Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. Brightly illuminated with the torches of grace, O Pacomius, thou stands before God as a faithful servant, delighting in the divine and indestructible glory in the heavens, wherefore we magnify thy venerable feet. Holy Father Pacomius, pray to God for us. A garland has been woven for thee as a victor by the life-bearing and almighty right hand, O Pacomius, and now count those who praise thy glorious memorial with hymns, Worthy to find forgiveness of failings, O all celebrated Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Reaping now the fruit of thy labors, O all admirable Pacomius, thou partakes of the joy that passes understanding. Wherefore do thou mediate with Christ, imploring him that thy disciples be saved, who now revere and honor thee. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Like the fleece thou didst receive the heavenly rain in thy womb, O all blameless virgin, and thou gavest birth for our sakes to him that gives ambrosia to those who piously laud him and declare thee to be the all-blameless Theotokos. Withdrawing to the deserts, in longing for the angel's life, thou didst put into subjection the passions of Save us. More honorable than the cherubim and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, thee who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, thee do we magnify. Glory to you, Christ God, O hope, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Holy Father, bless. May Christ, O true God, with the prayers of his holy and all pure mother, with the prayers of St. John the Baptist, of the holy and all praised apostles, with the power and under the protection of the holy life-giving cross and all the holy bodiless powers of heaven, with the prayers of our fathers among the saints, Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, Sisoes the Great, Brandon the Navigator, Oran of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ronan, Molwag, all the saints of all these islands, our protectors and our benefactors. With the prayers of our righteous father, Pacomius the Great of Egypt, with the prayers of our righteous father, Achilles, Metropolitan of Larissa, one of the 318 God-bearing fathers who gathered at Nicaea, with the prayers of our righteous father, Barbaros, the Merce Streamer, with the prayers of our righteous Father Andrew, the hermit and wonder worker, 
with the prayers of Saint Reticius, the Bishop of Autun in Gaul, with the prayers of our Father among the saints, Isaiah the Wonderworker, Bishop of Rostov, with the prayers of our righteous Father, Isaiah the Wonderworker of the Kiev Caves, with the prayers of our righteous Father, Euphrosinus of Pskov and his disciple Serapion, with the prayers of our righteous Fathers, Silvan and Pacomius of Nerechta, with the prayers of the Holy Crown Prince Demetrius of Moscow and all Russia, the Wonder Worker. With the prayers of the Holy New Hiram Martyrs, Pacomius, Archbishop of Chernigov, and his brother Averkius, Archbishop of Zhitomir, their father, the priest Nicholas, and their brother-in-law, the priest Vladimir. With the prayers of St. Dymphna and St. Gerobernus, St. Coleman and St. Britwin of Beverly, and all of those with them, who is in memory we also keep this day. And the prayers of the holy ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us. For he is good and he loves mankind. Amen. And the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, O God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.